Solving systems of linear algebraic equations. There are a lot of problems in science and engineering that at the end of the day reduce down to a set of linear equations. If you are an electrical engineer and you've had circuit theory, you've learned things like loop and node analysis. And for each loop and each node, you write an equation and we get a huge system of equations. And that's just one example of many. So what I'm doing now is I am color coding every single one of these parameters. The parameters in red, these are our sort of known coefficients. We should have numbers. We should be able to put numbers to those. So if we're doing circuit analysis, the values of the resistors, capacitors, and inductors somehow get folded into those A's. The blue variables, these are the unknowns. So Going back to the circuit theory example, these would be the currents or the voltages in the circuit that we're trying to find. And then on the right, these are also things that we should be able to have numbers to. These are constants. And so, again, back to the circuit analysis, they would probably be the voltages of our voltage sources or the currents of our current sources that get folded into those equations. So there's numbers for everything except the X values. That's what we need to find. In this video, we're going to discuss how to solve this system of equations using algebra. In later lectures, we're going to learn how to take this set of equations, put it into matrix form, and I think solve it much more simply and using a computer to help us solve that. So it's going to be a lot of work for us here to do this algebraically. Now imagine a system of like 10 by 10 equations, or more realistically, a million by a million. Well, we can't do that by hand anymore, but to appreciate better what's happening when we get to the matrix side, let's do this by hand algebraically. So the very first thing we're going to do is look at this first equation and we're going to solve it for X1. And when we do that, we end up with an equation of X1 in terms of X2 and X3. Now in our next step, we're going to take this expression for X1 and plug it into the second and third equations. When we do that, we will have eliminated X1 in these second two equations. So the second two equations will now only contain X2 and X3. Let's look at what happens when we do that. So we end up here. We have our original equation and then our second two equations as promised, X1 is eliminated. And we sort of have a new a22, A23, A32, and A33. And that's what the apostrophe is indicating. Those are new values. And the we calculate the new values from the old values. And these come from that substitution when we took our expression for X1 and plugged it into those second two equations to eliminate X1. So we call this forward substitution. And we're going to keep doing this. Now we're at the second equation. We will solve the second equation for X2. And we have this expression. So we have X2 in terms of only X3 now. X1's been eliminated in this and the third equation. So of course, now the next step, we will take this expression for X2 in terms of X3, and we'll plug it into the third equation to eliminate X2. Now the third equation will only be in terms of X3. So we do that, that forward substitution, and we have now a new equation in the third row. That's what the double apostrophe is. So we have a new A33, and of course a new B3. And so the way we calculate those is from the values from the previous step. That's the single apostrophe. Now, an interesting thing has happened here. Notice this is formed sort of a triangle over here. And it will turn out we're going to do backward substitution to finish solving this. But in this sort of triangular form, this problem is very close to being solved. So think of a triangular system as an almost solved system of equations where it's very fast, very efficient, very simple to solve from here. And you will see that. So register this in your minds because this will come up again when we start talking about matrices. OK, so. Almost solved, let's go ahead and solve it. We have this final third equation just in terms of X3 and everything else is no numbers. So we can go ahead and calculate X3. Well, that's easy, just a single division. Now that we have that 
value for x3, we can go back to what we did in step three when we did our forward substitution and we came up with an expression for x2 in terms of x3. We now have a number for x3, so we can immediately calculate x2 very quickly and very simply. Now that we have values for x2 and x3, we can go back to the equation we got in step one where we solve the first equation for x1 in terms of x2 and x3, and we can calculate our value of x1. The problem is now solved, and that was very fast and simple to do after we had that triangular form. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.